Hi, thanks for joining. Today we're at the White Post Auto Museum. Let's go and explore. The White Post Auto Museum is located about an hour east of Kamloops, British Columbia. They display and store classic, custom, and special interest vehicles in their showroom as well as their field of dreams. Starting off in the showroom, let's take a look at this 1946 Mercury UTE. This extremely rare vehicle was built in Canada for use in Australia. This is one of only 97 ever produced and spent its life down under before returning to Canada. Here's a 1965 Chevy 2, commonly known as the Chevy Nova. The 1965 model was the last of the first generation of Novas, but for Chevy enthusiasts, it's best known as the year that the Chevy 2 became a muscle car. It could be equipped with a 327 cubic inch V8, which provided up to 300 horsepower, and in terms of straight line acceleration, put it on par with the GTO, the 442, and the Mustang 289s. Here's a Corvair which was manufactured by Chevy between 1960 and 1969. It's the only American designed mass produced passenger car with a rear mounted air cooled engine. Oh, yes, man. No transmission hump because the engine's back here. Makes it handle like a sports car. It'll go almost anywhere. Well, the Miller's certainly not there. And Emma says she can even park it. Your Chevrolet dealer would be glad to listen while you tell him which Corvair would be right for your kind of living. Talk to him tomorrow. The rear engine, combined with the type of suspension used, led to stability issues when cornering, and the Corvair became notoriously known as a death trap. It ended up being featured in Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed. Although it's hard to say whether the Corvair was actually any less safe than other vehicles at the time, since the Corvair was an easy target, it helped bring about the creation of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the implementation of things like crash tests and safety standards, which helped improve the safety of our vehicles today. Here's a 1935 Packard hearse. Reportedly, the classic Who song, My Generation, was inspired by this vehicle when Townsend's Packard hearse was towed by the Queen Mother. She said it reminded her of her husband who'd been buried in a similar vehicle. As a result, Townsend was forced to ride the train, and on one trip from London to Southampton, he penned the lyrics to this classic rock song. This is a 1940 Fargo. In 1928, Chrysler bought the Fargo Motor Car Company and began to produce their own line of Fargo trucks. These trucks were manufactured in the United States, but if you purchased it outside of the country, it would be known as a Fargo. In Canada, the name Fargo was used right up until 1972 to differentiate these trucks from those being offered as Dodge trucks from Dodge dealers. This is a 1956 Crown Vic, which was the premium trim option of Ford's Fairlane model. Popular with collectors, the Crown Victoria has weathered the test of time due to its excellent handling standards and engineering that was better than most. Let's check out a clip from the Fast and the Furious 8, which sees Vin Diesel pitted in a road race against one of these 1956 Crown Vics. Here's a 1941 Dodge Business Coupe. In 1941, you could have purchased this brand new for a whopping $825. Here's a Pontiac Firebird. These were introduced in 1967 as a pony car to compete with the Ford Mustang and the Mercury Cougar. 
The Firebird's a popular vehicle and has been seen in TV and movies. It's been featured in iconic roles like Smokey and the Bandit, as well as TV shows like The Rockford Files. Would you look at that? Ten four. Heading out into the Field of Dreams, you can see there's a wide range of vehicles that are ripe for restoration projects. Here's a service vehicle from the village of Port McNeil. Not sure how it got here. Port McNeil is located 900 kilometers west on the Vancouver Island. Stashed away in the back is a hubcap tree ready for Christmas decorating. It's hard to imagine the amount of work that it would take to restore one of these vehicles to pristine condition. Although this old Dodge seems to be in pretty good condition. However, one thing I notice is that there's a lot of cool looking hood ornaments. Like this Dodge Ram. This Austin Flying A. or this Pontiac Indian Chief. And I see a note here that this vehicle was used as a prop in the TV series Man in the High Castle. And if you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop. Which in this case happens to be the attached antique mall, which has lots of other automotive-related memorabilia.